Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace, and today I want to talk about quantitative easing. I know it's a difficult one, isn't it? Uh, difficult to say, difficult to spell too. Let me write it up on the board first. Quantitative easing. Okay, bear with me. There we go. Quantitative easing. This is a, a, a word that's come into the lexicon recently because in the United States, the Federal Reserve decided to cut its uh, target rate, the Fed funds rate, to between zero, a band between zero and a quarter percent. It's a historically it never happened before in the U.S. It has happened elsewhere, however. In Japan, back in 2001, they cut the rate to zero. And what that means is, I mean, the central banks, um, the, the Fed and in, in Japan's case, uh, the, J the Bank of Japan, they have this weapon that they can use to try and get banks to lend to each other. And this is what we've had, the problem that we've had in the US is that banks haven't been lending to each other. And we've had a, a, uh, a lockup in, the, um, in the, uh, the lending cycle. So the whole credit market has frozen up. And so the Fed uses this, uh, this interest rate, this target rate, as a, a weapon to try and get banks to, to lend to each other and to free the credit market up. So that's what we had. We had this rate cut which knocked the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Fed funds rate to between zero and a quarter percent. Now, that's, uh, this, this is the, uh, the weapon that the, the, the Fed uses in terms of the, the price of credit. It's not quite the price of money, but it's what it costs banks to borrow, uh, to lend or to borrow to each other. That's the target rate. So if you cut that to zero, you've got nowhere else to go. You can't bring the rate down to, to a negative level. So that's the pricing taken care of. Now what the, uh, the central bank has is it can, it can take control of the quantity of money in the market as opposed to the price of money in the market. And that's where we get to this word or to this, uh, this term, quantitative easing. So here we are. We have easing. We're trying to ease, take pressure off the markets by using quantity. All right. Now this is all about one thing, which is trying to get this man. to lend money. And this man is, of course, Batty, the bank manager. Okay, so here he is with his bank. And the whole mission of what the Fed has been doing with its rate cuts and now its quantitative easing is to try and get this guy, this bank manager, to lend money. And thus far, he hasn't been lending the money. Okay, he's able to get money at very, very cheap rates. But what he's doing is instead of taking that money and lending it to all of these poor business people out here who desperately need money, you know, whether it be you know, General Motors or General Electric or you know, the general contractor down the road, these guys can't get money because this chap here, the bank manager, will not pass on this cheap money that he's getting to these people, to the men in the street, to the companies in the street that need it to... Uh, to expand their operations, to buy other companies, to do whatever it is to expand, to grow. He will not let that happen because this guy, Barry the bank manager, will not lend. And the reason he won't lend is because he is scared that he is not going to get his money back. All right. So what he does instead is he gets money from the Federal Reserve or from other banks, although interbank lending is still not, there's still not that much of it going on despite the cheapness. But he gets money and what does he do? He goes out and he buys treasuries. Why does he buy treasuries? He buys treasuries because, say, the 10-year treasury is paying about 2%. So he takes that money at zero or close thereto, and he goes out and he buys 10-year treasuries, and he makes 2%. So at least he's making money. I mean, inflation's running at about, what, 5.5% right now. But at least he's making some money on that deal, and he's not taking any risk because the 10-year treasury, as we know, you know, underwritten by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, is safe. These people down here who he might lend to at, you know, 8, 9, 10% or whatever, these people are not safe in his opinion because they're in the economy, the economy is deteriorating, so he won't lend. So what he does is he goes out and buys these treasuries instead. So the Federal Reserve, and that's old Uncle Sam over here, his top hat, <laughs> he's not happy about this at all. And so he has decided, Chairman Ben, he's decided to go out and do what's called quantitative easing. So what is that? Well, essentially, it is taking money and pumping it into the economy, pumping it into the banks. And the way that it does that is it goes out and it, and it, goes out and it buys assets from the banks themselves. Because the other problem with uh, Mr. Barry, the bank manager, is that in his bank, 
and then a bunch of other banks, of course. He's got a bunch of dodgy securities, whether it be you know, mortgage-backed securities or CDOs or collateralized loan obligations or bad loans to bankrupt companies, whatever it may be. He's got a lot of toxic assets in there. So the Treasury is saying, well, I'll come in and I will buy those assets from you and therefore put money into, the, into your account. So Uncle Sam you know, says, I'll take money. I'll, I'll basically create money and I will give it to you. And in return, you give me your bad securities. All right? So that's the first thing it does. This quantitative easing of creating this money takes the pressure off the banks by buying these bad securities. The second thing that Uncle Sam does is he says, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy these treasuries in the market. The reason he wants to do that is because the more demand that he creates for these treasuries, the lower the yield becomes. All right? And if the yield goes down, it means there's less incentive for Mr. Barry, the bank manager, to buy those bonds because he's not going to be making any money on the bonds. The yield drops to close to zero. Well, Mr. Bank, Mr. Barry is now making zero money on his investments. So what does that do? It forces him to look elsewhere. And the hope is, is that it will force him to look into the wider market, into the wider economy, to find good companies to invest his money in. All right? So he asks for, you know, 5% or 8% or whatever it is. But the hope is that by taking the pressure off the bank, Mr. Barry, the bank manager, by buying his asset-backed securities or his bad securities, and by reducing his incentive to buy treasuries and therefore closing that part of the market, it is increasing the likelihood that Mr. Barry will go out and invest in the wider market and invest in, in companies that are able to make him money by uh, just through normal, regular business loans. And that's what quantitative easing is called. The problem, of course, is if quantitative easing doesn't work, it means that Uncle Sam, or Ben Bernanke, has pumped vast amounts of money into the system, which devalues the dollar. Now, of course, that has an upside. Devaluing the dollar means that it's uh, cheaper for people to buy from us, so they may come and buy more of our goods, which may invigorate the economy. But if you devalue the dollar too much, then suddenly nobody wants dollars. People start selling the dollar um, crazily, and you have a crash in the, uh, in the value of the currency, you've got a real problem then that's going to leave everybody very badly needing a drink.